Wizzy's Quest, and Doctor Strange 2. It's Amiga Public Domainia. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Amigos. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. And today, Aaron, we're going to be covering two public domain games for the Amiga, Wizzy's Quest and Doctor Strange 2. Mm. Aaron, what are you the doctor of? Oh, boy. Well, the uh, I'm the doctor of eating. I don't know if you can... <laughs> <laughs> is that a recognized profession? Uh, well, I, if it isn't, I'm, I'm going to take it to the house. Because that's that's what and this one thing I've done over this last year off has been uh, I've uh, explored all the uh, all the uh, doctorates and uh, PhDs of food. And unfortunately, <laughs> I'm not the doctor of going out and getting exercise. Unfortunately, what about you? Oh, I mean, most people I think would call me the doctor of hypocrisy. <laughs> Do you think that? <laughs> I don't think people I don't think say it. that. I know it. I know it. What you know. We haven't really talked about wrestling much on this show. Have there ever been any doctor wrestlers? It's funny you should mention that, Boat. It's it's real, actually. It's amazing you'd bring that up. Because I know most people are like, oh, here we go. But <clears throat> just this past Wednesday, uh, the uh, AEW group had a show headlined by the first main event with women. And mm. it was a lights-out, no-disqualification match between a, a lady from the graveyards of... Uh, Mexico, a name Thunder Rosa against Doctor Britt Baker, DMD. She's a di- practicing dentist. Wow! And this was a world class bloodbath of a match. Mm. These chicks killed each other. There were superplexes on the chairs. They were putting each other through tables. And at the end of it, the doctor has a finishing move where she takes it. She has her assistant at ringside, and the assistant puts a glove on her, and she <laughs> she puts you in like a in like a cross face, and then sticks her fingers in your mouth and starts ripping on your jaw like this. Oh, And oh. Thunder Rosa was in this. She was in mm. this move. And the only way she got out was she rolled the doctor over to a big pile of thumbtacks. Oh, my and gosh. That, and then she finished her off with a thunder driver, threw a table off the side of the ring. It was awesome. One of the best, yeah. one of the best, most violent, bloody matches you ever see two women have in America. It's quite a quite well, a match, man. So yeah, there are doctors, plenty of famous doctors that were in wrestling, but that's the one that comes to mind. We'll we'll leave all of you listeners out there with that particular mental image as we roll on to this week's Amiga News. Amiga News. Now, Aaron, we had a big week this week. One of our buddies. Uh, the one and only 10-minute Amiga Retrocast, he celebrated a pretty significant milestone. 4,000 subscribers. Yes. I assume that this is YouTube subscribers. Yes. Uh, and uh, he is he is now, uh, he's, he's left the 2,000 behind, and now he's doing something with the Amiga 4,000. Tell us about it, Aaron. Uh, well, congratulations to Doug, uh, who, uh, and I've, I've talked to him uh, privately and congratulated him for hitting that big milestone uh, it's a great thing, and he, he deserves uh, all the success he's got and more. And so to, to commemorate this, he had a, a tiptoe through his Amiga 4000 here. Uh, it's just like he just like the usual thing that he does. He goes, opens it up. He shows you the various uh, aspects of it, the parts. It's funny. I owned one of these briefly, and I never bothered to even take the lid off of it. Because <laughs> it was <laughs> this is well before we did the Amigos. I was just like, hey, mm-hmm. look at all this money. Sitting and here. you had a 4000T, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, we did. Yeah. The big uh, dog. But uh, uh, Doug goes into all the sh- you know the good, the bad on the 4000, <clears throat> and uh, the, the, uh, what you can do with it, uh, the limitations, the advantages of it. It's a, it's a good episode. Doug it's Doug and his element explaining uh, what's in his particular four thousand and why it's there and what's purpose is. Uh, again, we you know me and you've never really. I mean, I, I said I owned a four thousand, but I mean, like I said, I really never even hardly hooked up something to check it. I've never mm-hmm. really owned a box um, Amiga that I've ever fooled with. And one of these days, I'll probably have to get into it. But I'm not in a not a huge hurry just because of the space. I just Right, <laughs> the space to devote to him, but it was still neat to see him uh, to crank his up, and it, of course it was all in celebration of hitting that big four zero. So again, congrats, Doug. Well done, sir. Absolutely, congratulations. Now, Aaron, our next story 
it seems like we've been doing a lot of talking about the Black Dawn Rebirth game. A couple of weeks ago, uh, the uh, the developer announced that it was going free. Well, it turns out that he's working on a new project that is stemming from Black Dawn, but is totally broken away. This comes to us from Neil over at Indie Retro News. Uh, he has a write-up here that says that the uh, the creator of Black Dawn Rebirth uh, is his he's split off what was going to be the follow-up into its own standalone adventure. Okay, and so this new game uh, is called Black Dawn Rogue, and uh, this is going to be an entirely new setting. You know, new new characters, new movement types. You know, all all kinds of stuff like that. I know there's a lot of people that are real into this genre, the the old dungeon crawler, and so this looks like another solid title that is that is currently in development. It doesn't look like there's any sort of a timeline available here about when these things are coming. But you can check out the full story over at Indie Retro News and see some screenshots. What do you think about this thing, Aaron? Uh, it looks it looks pretty good. I mean, we 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 did the uh, the last one, uh, and we had a look at it. I know these are not your bag, so there's no mm. there's no way everyone knows that. But uh, uh, I, I I used to play these a lot. Now, are they still in my bag? Eh, I don't know. Uh, uh, Time hit marches on, but but back when I was younger, they were absolutely my bag, and there's still plenty of people who love these these dungeon crawlers of this of this sort. And the and, it and looks I can nice. tell you this, I can tell you this, I already like this one more because he the, he's thought to include a a map or an overhead map feature into the HUD this time. So uh, I'm a big fan of that. Yeah, Don't get good, me lost. That's a good idea. Eh? Well, good luck to yeah. everybody on this one. I, I hope it does well. Yeah, absolutely. Moving on, we've got a, there's a new port to the Amiga. This is a port of a game called Galactica. Are you familiar with Galactica, Aaron? I'm familiar with Battlestar Galactica, but that's pretty much Maybe this is related. This is, this is an Amiga version of a Linux game called Conquest. So I, I did a little bit of looking into what this game is. Right. And this is a classic tile-based strategy game where there's, there's, there's no action it plays out almost just like a board game where you're moving ships from planet to planet and there's you're taking over different different parts of the galaxy and all that stuff. Uh, I think that this was a pretty big hit on Linux. I'm, I'm not a big Linux guy myself, so I, I don't really know much about the original game, but it is cool seeing this game ported over to the Amiga. Uh, this is being done by, uh, I guess, a guy from BitPlan, and uh, he's also developed a piece of software called GoADF, uh, that uh, allows you to manipulate ADF files in various ways. So uh, anyway, this this is a game that is currently, I guess it's free to download and play. Uh, there, It's not 100% stable, I guess, but you can check out, again, this link from uh, Indie Retro News. This is really the site to go to if you're at all into new games on old platforms. This looks better than the Linux version, so uh, hey, it might be fun. Like I said, I don't, I don't yeah. do a lot of these little desktop distraction games but when I back in the day, I used to fiddle with them a lot more. But yeah, I'll, I'll like a good space game as much as the next guy. Absolutely. Now, Aaron, our next story comes to us from the Bitmap Brothers. The Bitmap Brothers, possibly would you, you you'd agree with me that they're the most overrated developers in computing history, wouldn't you? No, no what? No, God, no. Oh, oh. Why maybe would you I'm say alone. That? So these guys, you know, everybody likes them. They're sitting out front of their chopper with their sunglasses the on. The epitome of 80s exuberance. Well, you know, they're, the soundtracks of their games, you know, no matter the quality of their games, the games always had bumping title tracks. Uh, the themes for the Bitmap Brothers games were always really, really good if you like Euro Dance Trash. So um, this, is, uh, this is a new 12-inch vinyl featuring the Bitmap Brothers' greatest hits. Look at this guy on the cover. Yeah. He looks like he's ready to rock and roll. He's, he's got his headphones Xenon on. Too, man. I remember that the, the, the guy that sells you stuff? Mm -hmm. That's the, the guy. guy that sells you stuff. He, and don't, don't forget about Magic Pockets and your favorite, Gods. I'm jumping in here to, to cut you off. You're an idiot. Bitmap Brothers are the bomb. Doc, look at these. Just look at these tracks. Xenon, Xenon 2, Speedball. Those are great games. Gods, great game. Chaos Engine. You're bragging on these guys. You see these guys that have, were over and flooded. You're nuts. They're great. Those are mm -hmm. great games. I like Xenon 2s. I love that game. Speedball? Come on. Good well, stuff. So good for them. And, and I like the, the album cover. It looks awesome, too. So this is this a uh, great. This is this is a really good looking package. I like the clear vinyl. I like the the, the flat orange cover. 
and it's it's pretty reasonable too. Twenty five bucks gets you this thing. Uh, this is coming from readonlymemory.bg. Yeah, and uh, they have a bunch of other Bitmap Brothers stuff as well. Uh, there is a uh, a book called the Bitmap Brothers Universe that details, I guess, all of the all of their their shenanigans yeah. from back in the day. So, uh, yeah, if you're a fan of the Bitmap Brothers, check out readonlymemory.bg. I've never heard of a website with the VG extension before. Have you heard of that one? No, I don't think so. These these uh, uh, <laughs> these other books look cool too. The making yeah. of Speedball 2, the Bitman Brothers universe. I like it, man. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And our final story of the news this week comes as our new Amiga hardware pick of the week. This is the Amiga RGB to HDMI video slot card brought to you from our friends at Retro Rewind. So, Aaron, we talked about oh. the uh, Amiga RGB to HDMI adapter a couple weeks ago. Well, Frank has just put out this new one. This is uh, a, an a RGB to HDMI video adapter for big box Amigas. This thing slots into a 2000 or a 3000. It slots right into the video slot. And uh, it is it works with any socketed based Denise chip. Uh, this is another gimmick where you hook up your own Raspberry Pi Zero to it. And boom, crystal clear HDMI output. What do you think of this thing, Aaron? This is the, you know, I gotta say it's the first I'd seen this. So did you say this is complete, totally brand new? I hadn't seen this. this yeah, this this was this just dropped on the site. This is great <laughs> because people that were out in the cold, they're in. You know, you know, they're in. That again, this is still the cheapest way to go. It's a simple slot. Stick it in there. Uh, these things are easy to set up. Awesome, outstanding. Yeah. I, I, yeah, that's great because they were they were the people that were that were uh, uh, not getting any love from the other one. So now you've got it. You pop a, a Pi Zero in this thing. Those those things cost practically nothing. You stick it in, you're good to go. So yeah, yeah so outstanding. Th this thing is for sale right now for seventy bucks, uh, but you can save ten percent off this plus anything you want to buy over at Retro Rewind by using the promo code Amigos Rock. You can save ten percent off any order. Make sure you use all caps when you type in that promo code. RetroRewind.ca. We really appreciate them sponsoring this episode of Amigos. Yes, sir. All right, Aaron. It's time for this week's games. What's Bam. up? On, what's up first, man? Let's have a look at Wizzy's Quest here, Boat. Uh, for, again, I, I, as I often do, I'll ask you well, yet again. Have you ever played uh, any of these games? No, never. Yeah, me either. I never. I never heard of them. Uh, I, I know who Doctor Strange is, but this is a completely unrelated Doctor Strange, mm -hmm. which we'll get to that in a moment. We'll start with Wizzy's Quest here. So, Wizzy's Quest, uh, the, of course, these are both public domainia, uh, released in 1991 disc, and it has the developer listed as FEAC, Feek, Psy, and Gad. We'll go with that. Okay. Uh, and... Uh, uh, the uh, the primary uh, people that worked on this, the artist and decoder, uh, Guido Appenzeller, uh, he did the uh, art and the coding, uh, assisted by a relative, Soren Appenzeller, uh, with some musicians in the mix it's, uh, and some extras, but those are the main your, your main culprits on this one. Uh, this was in English and German, uh, ECS, OCS, the usual stuff. Um this one, and I wanted to talk to you about this right up front. <clears throat> this game starts out, uh, now I will say, I played this on uh, the Unamiga, the ADF version. And I believe you also, did, did you also play the ADF version of this Yeah, the, the, I, as far as I'm aware, there's no WHD yeah, version. I didn't, even, I didn't think there was, but I, but, uh, I wasn't sure. Um, on the um, Unamiga version of this, there's an, on all the versions, there's a little story that comes up. That tells tells you what's going on uh, to you know set the game up, and uh, that uh, it was the it was screwed up a little bit on the Unamiga. The text was, and I thought it was an Unamiga thing. And then I watched uh, some demos of this on YouTube, and they were it was screwed up on there too. Really? Did you, did because I didn't have any I didn't have any garbled text at all and all that stuff. No, it's just it just the text went outside the bounds of the of the think bubbles basically. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, and so I was like, so That's, you can still read it, sort of. Yeah, it was it was kind of jacked up. Uh, so, boat uh, uh, having never seen this before, the, what you do in this, it's actually it's kind of an interesting game to be honest with you. At the beginning, basically, uh, your uh, your crew, their Wizzy, 
uh, and uh, their companion is are being pursued by uh, looks like some undead at the beginning of it, and so they duck into this area to basically escape. And the goal of this is to get uh, through the levels and out the door. The funny thing about it is uh, the the, uh, the the girl with you, whose name escapes me. I don't know if she is she ever named. Like I said my text was. Screwed I don't up, think so. I couldn't so. Tell. She turns herself invisible at the beginning of the game, and so. She can go anywhere she wants and be untouched, effectively. As uh, uh, but she, but uh, she has to. She can't do anything else. So the wizard has to get her everywhere, and his powers are the ability to to basically uh, create and then dissolve blocks. That's what he does, and they're, uh, to climb on or to uh, to get past areas that are blocked. And so the whole game is moving him around getting to the point where you can get uh, keys or get gems or whatever you need to escape the level, and then getting her out the level. So it's a two, it's a two-fold game, doing right. the stuff you need to do plus getting getting her out the door. Uh, what did you think about this one, Boat? In ter- when it, I mean, in terms of the graphics, the presentation. Well, we controls. we should spend a little bit of time on the open here. This game has an incredibly lengthy opening it, sequence. Right. Um, when you start the game. You're greeted with a, a pretty pleasant, you know, title screen, and you're able to access the instructions, uh, the story so far, and then play the game. Uh, now, it's worth noting that this game was originally programmed in Germany and was translated by some folks, I'm assuming, in England. Uh, and if you read the backstory that's sort of been retranslated, it's sort of that uh, it's it's very reminiscent of Amiga magazines of the day where it has a little bit of racism, a little bit of misogyny, you know, the kind of stuff that, you know, 14 to 16 year old Amiga fans in Britain were into at the time. Wouldn't fly today. I don't know if you went by and you read any of that. Where, stuff, where did you where I didn't even see a, a, a backstory. Where did, so did in you, the opening, the very opening title screen, yeah. you see you see three uh, three bubbles you can click on. You can click oh. on uh, the backstory instructions and then play the game. I pulled a you this time i didn't even bother to click on those i just played the game so so what is the backstory can you elaborate i mean i thought i got so most the, of the, the, the backstory is that a princess has been ca- captured by uh a, an evil sorcerer and you've got to free her okay okay now they they go into i wouldn't say explicit detail but just sort of crude detail what you're going to do to the virgin when you uh when you get her back yeah. And then they use a, a term that I believe is now offensive to the Germans uh, in describing how German people spend too much time writing the backstory and their backstory was better. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. So look into that. <laughs> look into that if, if you want uh, if, if you want to. Uh, now, when you start the game, the game doesn't just load. It's like it tells you about the components that it's loading one at a time. It's like getting the sprites ready, doing this, doing that. And yeah. it's like four or five things. So you're like, oh, my gosh, let's just get to get to the game. Yeah. Then when the then the, there's a second title screen that shows up and you've got your wizard and he's casting lightning bolts on the various menu options. Yeah, and then you've got cool. to choose play again. So don't get me wrong. It was neat. It was a neat effect. But it's just it takes way too long to get into this game. One thing I noticed is that it, if you get to the when you get to the title screen and the wizards shooting the lightning at the options, if you wait too long to pick the option, then the wizard starts shooting lightning at the high score table, and you can't stop him until the high scores are out there. <laughs> then you can then you can start back. I did. I listen. I, I, the the text being jacked up was it was what it was. But I did. This game had a lot of panache as it come yeah. up. Yeah. It, 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 and it's uh, it's pleasant to look at. In fact, I was I was pleasantly surprised with the right. presentation. Now let me let me let me try and explain a, a little bit more about what this game is. So this game is a clone of Solomon's Key. Solomon's Key is an arcade game that had no business being in the arcade. Uh, basically, can you imagine this kind of a game being in an arcade? Well, you know, I have played Solomon's Key as a long time ago. And I honestly didn't even, I, I, you know, it's funny because we had actually talked about that earlier in the week or somebody on Discord had mentioned yeah. it. And I, and I remember noting it, but it's been so long since I played Solomon's Key to myself. I don't remember how it played. So, it, so, so it's very the, similar. What, you, what, you, what you've what you got to do, the, di- the main differences between Solomon's Key in this game, because I imagine there's a lot of people that have played Solomon's Key a lot more than have played Wizzy's Quest, uh, is that uh, you are able to basically conjure up and make blocks disappear. Okay. Differences between this game and Solomon's Key are that uh, in Solomon's Key, you can actually break blocks with your head as well. 
And so you you actually, in part of the game, is that you have to break blocks with your head and, and release secret items and things like that that you need to complete your quest. Uh, there is no companion in Solomon's Key. That's, that's, the big, that's the thing that makes this game really cool, I think, is that it adds an element... Like, if you think about, like, an indestructible lemming is sort of like what your companion is like. So she's going to walk anywhere that she can. It's yeah. your job to clear a path for her to get out of the level. Um, and so in addition to making blocks grow and disappear, sometimes you have to be able, you have to get a weapon that you can use to defeat a bad guy so you can get to the door. It's a lot like the adventures of Lolo. You know, there's a, a instead of being top down like that, though, this is side scrolling. Um there, there's a lot of levels. I think the game, you know, the, the, the game has a prevailing shade of brown that covers everything. I'd say that brown is the dominant color. However, right. the I thought that the characters, you know, they're small sprites, but they're well animated. The yep. rotation animation was particularly impressive. When you have your wizard or the companion, whenever they switch directions, yeah. it's not like the, the, the sprite just swatch. You actually watch them, like, rotate around, which I thought was pretty cool. I thought all the enemies were well drawn. Uh, and yeah, I, I had, I you know, this is not a kind of game that I'm going to spend a lot of time with because I hit a wall pretty soon with these kind of games and they just become frustrating. But I did play three or four levels of this and I, I enjoyed my time with it. As far as games like this go, it's a great representation of the game. And I think that this could have easily been sold as a commercial Amiga game easily. I actually got a little further than you. I didn't get much further, but I did get a little further. And I will say you, you, the gra the. You're right. It is brownish. Of course, I, I, the, given the setting, it's understandable. But they do throw in nice splashes of color. And plus, mm -hmm. the, your guy looks colorful. The, uh, the the block gimmick, it took me a little while to fully grasp, especially doing it diagonally and getting rid of blocks. That took yeah. me a little while to understand how to get rid of them and where you need to stand. Uh, and so, but once I figured it out, uh, uh, I was okay with it, you know. I could figure it out. The the for me, this game has one major failing. Well, two, and one is the t wacky issue with the text, but that's not a that's not gonna really it's not a deal breaker. But the other one is that I hated the controls for jumping. Uh, that this guy was hard to. This guy has a crappy jump, and you need to use it a lot. And it just uh, it, this is a game that screams for a second button. I hate to be yeah, the, I hate to absolutely. be you. I hate to steal yeah. your gimmick here, Bo, but I'm going to. Uh, as a up for jump game, this is this is not my favorite. Now, <clears throat> did I get used to it? Yes. Uh, could I get somewhere? Yes. Uh, I'm not Commander Puzzle by any stretch of the imagination, but I will say I thought the the difficulty ramped up pretty fairly. Like mm -hmm. I, <clears throat> uh, you can when you play this game, you can actually make yourself work harder than you need to. <laughs> Right. Depending on the path you take, or if you screw up, this is one of those games where uh, if it wasn't for the crappy jump, then you would only die if you screwed up, and mm -hmm. which is always a good thing because right. that way you're like, okay, I get it, I botched this, I can, I know how to get past it next time. Many times the jump screwed me, and so I'm I'm gonna hold that thing responsible for some of my deaths. But once you get a, a grip with that. Uh, the game plays fair. It's a fair game, and it's the addition of of the companion. Because I mean, if you were just getting yourself out, that wouldn't be as as uh, creative, all right, mm -hmm. as this is. Uh, this, I agree with you. This is better than a lot of commercial games we've played. And yes. Despite the fact that again, I, without having played Solomon's Key for many years, I I can't comment on how close closely this resembles it. But I will say, uh, this game could could stand on its own uh, uh, quite easily, just with a few minor changes. And like I said, I would love to see... Uh, this is a game I would love to see like the company or somebody go in. I mean, uh, this is a perfect one to put an emulation where you could set your own buttons up. I think it'd be a lot more fun. Yeah. If, to me, I mean, yeah, the jump is not ideal. One button is not ideal. This is a game that screams for, some, like you said, the company to go in and just make an infinite lives trainer. Because the game doesn't suffer any less of a challenge if you have infinite lives yeah. you know it makes you want to play it more because you want to experiment more and you don't want to get sent back yeah. to the beginning or whatever so yeah and and they did things they did things that i the enemies at least the parts i got they basically went on select patterns and so you can effectively use your blocks to stop them from getting to where you're at right which you have that's to. A, yeah that's a big part of the strategy uh, but 
it they there wasn't anything super different. Like this was far and away of the two games we're looking at today. This is the much easier of the two uh, because th th this one you could everything was in front of you. It's all one screen, and you could tell what's going on. And and you knew when you start. Okay, here's where I've got to go. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can work. So you could sort of make a plan. You know what right. I mean? Right. Uh, and so I like that. Uh, uh, this you're right when you said it was sort of like the 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 chick with you sort of like a lemming. She what mm -hmm. she does? She just goes wherever you tell her to go. And I didn't have that become a problem, but I can see where in on I'm sure in the future levels it could be a real problem. Uh, I'm uh, sure that they have places where if you don't play your cards right, she gets stuck somehow and yeah. you can't get back to her. But whatever, I, I so. will say, uh, I, listen, I never get real excited about public domainia, as you know. But this was a treat. This actually mm -hmm. was this actually was not bad. I yeah. mean, they, I'm not, in fact, I'm going to go out on a limb and say it's good. I'm going to, yeah. it's, it's not too bad at all. And yeah. the fact that this I, this, was given this away is, I mean, is if, if, if we, we've done, you know, public domain games since, since the beginning of the show, yeah. this is easily in the top five. I mean, he, yes. I, it's games yes. like this that I just wonder, like this was a release in 1990. Why did he not go to a publisher and say, look, play this, put this out, you know, like, if I had something this good and I worked that hard on it, you better believe I'd be pushing for a commercial release. Well, uh, the fact that this is a free game just boggles the mind. They may have get they may have gotten some money because this was on a magazine cover. Mm, uh, this was on okay. the uh, uh, issue forty seven of the one from mm -hmm. August of ninety two. So I don't know mm -hmm. if, if you get any if you get any jack. Uh, also, I was looking on on uh, uh, on Lemon. And they had a little blurb here. Actually, it was Hall of Light. And it said here, the game was developed from May to August 1990 on an Amiga 1000 with 2.5 meg of memory. It had to run on every Amiga with 512 and be compatible with Kickstart 1.2 slash 1.3. It was written in GFA Basic version 3.03 and was compiled with the GFA compiler. The graphics were produced with D-Paint 3. The sprites and levels were done using uh, the, the fellow's own object editor. And the sound effects were produced with the Perfect Sound Digitizer, which I used to have one of those, and software. And the music was done with MED. So there you go. That, that This is an Amiga game through and through. Every aspect yeah. of it was generated yeah. using some Amiga stuff. Uh, and then a bit of trivia they also had written in. According to the instructions on the disc, uh, Wizzy's Quest includes a hidden level editor... That could be it could only be accessed by players if they made a donation to the main coder via snail mail. Mm. So I wonder uh, if there's and a level editor to this one might be kind of fun for certain yeah. people to tinker with and make a new set of levels. Boat, uh, believe it or not, this also had reviews. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. Uh, Lemon, the people there give this a uh, an admirable seven point one eight, uh, which I think is not too bad. Boat. Mm -mm. Uh, Mega Force looked at this uh, in July of '93 and gave it an 86 percent, and Amiga Power gave uh, looked at this in October of '91 and gave it four out of five. So this actually, got, this actually got pretty good scores. Listen, I, I'm in total agreement. Yeah, I'm in total agreement with those scores. How did it fare with our Discord people? They may have a shot at this one. Not, vote? not as well. Not as well. I'm sorry to say. Really? Um, Level Lord writes. Never played Wizzy's Quest before, and it definitely reflects as a PD game. Graphics are not the best. There is no music, and the sound effects are a, a little too much. There are instructions with the game, which is good. Sprite animation is super smooth, and controls were okay. For what it is, a puzzle platformer, my score is four. So, level lord. Not not a fan. Four out of ten? Uh, four out of ten. Dang. Okay. Um, Jason Warns writes, uh, playable, six out of ten. So... These guys not as impressed. I, I personally, I would uh, give this a seven yeah. easily. Oh, I think this is this is an eight, an eight. For well, me. I mean, I, I don't know if I got far enough in it to again. We, I didn't get far enough. I, well, yeah, I mean, review, but I'm right? just saying it, how far I got in it is irrelevant. I mean, this is an eight because I had a great time playing it. You know. Well, I, I think this is a uh, a hidden gem, boat. I really yeah. do, and uh, I think this is one everyone. Listen, uh, everyone should. I think should at least give it a whirl. Uh, it may not be your cup of tea, but heck, it's not my cup of tea, and I liked it. Yeah, it could use music. It could, the thing is, it was a few tweaks away, just a few, from being ready, ready for prime time. Fix those uh, opening screens, and also maybe take out some of the crap in there that they shouldn't have put in the first place, the verbiage. Right. And, and maybe, you know, this would, this could do with some real nice, like, 
lemmings ask different layered sound, you know, different levels of sound, you know. But I mean, that may be asking a lot, considering that was done by a big software house. But at least a good tune to get yeah. in there to go through. But man, I, yeah, I I think this was actually I was I was really surprised. But let's just put it now. That we way. we have one late uh, late arrival in the in the review uh, section here on Discord. Pixels of Dawn. He writes, "I only recently discovered the joys of Solomon's Key, so I was really happy when this turned up." It's definitely not a perfect version of that kind of game, and it has a bit of PD jank to the controls. Yes. But it's definitely fun, and I will play it again. I would call the Amiga as a platform a little PD jank to the controls. So. No, I don't agree with that. Most games control great, but this one, that is my number one problem with this game. If they, The music would be great and all the other crap, but if they would add second button support, for example, or maybe just make the Wizard have something resembling a, a better jump, I would be okay with because I don't like a game where I get frustrated by yeah uh, and I don't being like frustrated where, by the controls is the well, worst. Well, when you can, when you can't blame yourself, you mm -hmm. know, then I'm like, right. well, you know, here we go, you know. So I don't like that. So with that said, you ready to move on? Let's move on. All right. The next up is, is the strangely named, no pun intended, uh, Doctor Strange Two: The Return of Doctor Strange. Both right. Uh, unrelated to the Marvel comics or movies of the same name. Uh, but I will say I've always been a big fan of the of Doctor Strange as a character in the comics, and I was pleasantly surprised by his film, which was not exactly the normal superhero fare. I enjoyed uh, that one a lot. Yeah, quite a quite a quite a lot of uh, special effect and wizardry was involved. No pun intended there either. So, uh, Doctor Strange Two: The Return of Doctor Strange. Uh, this one came out in '95, boat. So this is a, a this one came out a little bit later. Uh, mm -hmm. Than the one we just looked at, a uh, one disc. This was developed by an outfit cunningly named the Ouija Board, mm. which I enjoy that. Uh, this was uh, coded by a fellow named Ian West, uh, who also worked on Orc Attack Returns and and my personal favorite, Santa and Rudolph Do Christmas. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Maybe we'll look forward to that on a future yeah. public domain. Graphics by and music were done by a fellow named Jonathan Eggleton. He he worked on the same game, so I guess they were just a they were a do du, a duo. Uh, and this was uh, again ready to go on the ECS OCS. Um, Boat in this one, you play Doctor Strange, and you're going in. And I did, again, this is another one. If, the, if I didn't see a backstory to it, did you? Did you? Can you clue us in? Did you read something I didn't? Uh, boy, I don't think so. I don't I think did. I did. I did look at Doctor Strange one though. Oh really? Uh, Doctor Strange one is a completely different game. It yeah. still stars, you know, Doctor Strange. He's still there, but it is a load runner, uh, Mister Do's Castle type I game. See. Yeah, and well, so this, this is they've they've gone in a different direction, obviously influenced by the 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 the, the tides of the times. Ninety five. It's time for a platformer. This is a platformer through and through. Well, uh, this game, <clears throat> this game sort of. I had seen uh, uh, a picture of this before I started playing it, and I thought to myself, this looks like something I could get into. Mm -hmm. And uh, because it is a lot of jumping, platforming action, uh, with of course, but with some puzzle elements too. Uh, and this one, you play as Doctor Strange, uh, armed with like what effectively is like a slime gun, and you have to navigate through these different uh, these different scrolling levels uh, to escape through the door. It's a lot, so sort of like the first one uh, in a way, boat. Uh, mm -hmm. First, you have to get the keys, and then you get get the heck out. Uh, you start off, and I will say uh, there that is sort of where the similarities to the first one end, yeah. because this one again, ha not, this one has real good tune. I like this. It does have music. This, yeah, we should we should get that out of the way early. This game has a background song. Yeah, and it's pretty yes. good. It's pretty catchy. Uh, it's it's very Amiga esque. Uh, it's well, also, I don't know. Amiga esque is silence for no, gameplay. It's not. Don't be a hater, Boat. Uh, the uh, it also has digitized sound effects uh, out out the wazoo uh, and uh, tons of them. So it's it's they put some time. Yeah, they 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 it's 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 variants on flatulence is what it is. Well, well not it's, just that. There's a like when you die, there's a funny sound effect, and there's there's a bunch of crazy sound effects. Uh, you go through these levels. Like the, I'm just gonna start with the first level, which is where you start. Uh, you you have two goals. You have to get the keys to. Then you have to leave through the door. Those, those are your goals. And along the way, you're picking up puzzle pieces that basically turn into you. There's a picture of you, at least as far as I got. Um, there are other elements of the game that, I, frankly, I never saw because I didn't get far enough into it. 
uh, there's these th- these levels are timed. So mm-hmm. Eric Nelson over and, at and, and when you, and, like, and I can tell you that. They're, they're timed, and we're not talking about like. 450 seconds no this is one of those of... arbitrary time uh tables this is like you run right yeah because you it this gives this thing is tight mm-hmm. and when the time starts running out you see the uh, the bottom of the screen start uh uh flashing yeah 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 it, it basically cycles color cycles mm-hmm. right uh, we should also mention that this is one of those patented games where they take up I would say almost half of the screen. With it the, is 45 percent of the screen yeah, is the HUD. Yeah, is the HUD now? Is the is it that important? No, <laughs> hell no, it's not. Yeah. They've got a huge container that is your ammo. You could have just had a number for the ammo. Mm-hmm. You didn't have to have a container for it. So anyway, uh, uh, you go through here. Your but this is another up for jump. Your button shoots your gun, <clears throat> and as you go through, if you see a creature, you can shoot the creature, and if and if the and if that creature is affected by your gun, which many aren't, uh, you can once you slime him, you can run over him, get points for him. Uh, there are tons of creatures in this that don't give two craps about your gun, uh, and so shooting them does nothing, which was uh, unfortunate to say the least, because those are generally <laughs> the ones that would kill me. Right. Uh, the uh, the doctor has a much better jump uh, than the wizard does. Uh, this guy has a proper platformy jump, I would say. Somewhere in the Montezuma's Revenge level right. of jumping, or su- Super Frog, or well, no, Super Frog's a lot more floaty. Th- this is floaty, but do you think Super so? Frog's, no, I, I, Super I disagree. Frog, you know, go back and play it. Super Frog's super duper floaty. Okay. This guy is just. I mean, it, it's still floaty. floaty. It's still some floaty. Oh no, Maybe. it is floaty, but not Super. Super Frog goes above, above and beyond in floaty zone. Uh, anyway, this is one of your classic. Uh, almost like a uh, uh, almost like a console style game where you run mm-hmm. around avoiding spikes, f- firing on enemies, picking up keys, picking up items to move you down the level, pulling levers and activating stuff. The but, but it doesn't have the clever parts of what a lot of good what make good console games like this work, which is stuff like this has blind jumps, lots of them. Where you, and if you just don't know what's going on below you, there's no way to look. You just fall to your death. Uh, at the crap below you, for a, a creature. I mean, they they happen early. They happen often. Uh, level design, I would say, is an issue. What? Just I don't want to drone on. What'd you think of this one right out of the gate, boat? Well, I'll tell you what I liked about it. All right. So, it's 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 a it's not offensive to the eyes. I wouldn't say it's a beautiful game, and I wouldn't say. I mean, it's obviously leagues behind a like a game even a game like you know the uh teenage caveman or something like that the uh <laughs> it's it's it, it's not even it's not even close to that but it looks okay yeah it, this I thought it looks, looks pretty good cartoon it looks slightly better than an 8-bit platformer slightly better than an 8-bit platformer oh yeah um I agree. the hud is a huge issue you can't <laughs> undersell i see what just you did how, there how ridiculous it is it is it's monstrous uh, yeah yeah i mean it's it's ridiculous uh so that that's 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 a big knock against it uh the, having the tune though big plus you know yep. i'm always happy when there's background music yep um the uh the the big problem that i had with this game you know you we, we've spent a lot of time talking about jumping on this show and the jump on Doctor Strange is fine. Like you said, it, it's a normal Amiga jump. It's it's not variable rate. You always jump the same height every time, no matter how much or little you press on the button. And yeah. that's fine. I can deal with that. What I can't deal with is the percentage of jumps in this game that are pixel-perfect jumps. Yes. I mean, and right th- out of the gate, too. Right, right. out of the, the gate. The very first jump in this game, you have to line yourself up on the exact right pixel to be able to make the jump. Come with that spike that's, pit. Yeah, yeah that's, that's unacceptable. Yeah. That's unacceptable in a game like this. Um, and what it tells you is that these people were not really what you call pro platform gamers. You know, they they, they probably had seen pictures in magazines before and they were like, yeah, we could definitely design something like this. And then they went and they played Manic Miner. Um, and so <laughs> this is, uh, the now, that that's my biggest problem with this game. My second biggest problem with this game is that this is an exploration platformer yeah. that punishes exploration yes. because you you have a incredibly punishing timer. Having a timer at all in an exploration platformer is dumb. Having one that's only 30 or 40 seconds long is super dumb. 
So you're all the time, you want to explore the level. You want to see what's going on. You want to see what these guys have done, but you're constantly pressured by this clock ticking down, okay? Yeah. And then the the last thing about this is the level design. There are certain places in these levels, and and I got I got farther in this than I did in the uh, in the first game. There's one. The first thing you have the opportunity to do is to drop down onto a lower level. Yeah. Well, guess what? If you do that, you're dead. You're dead because right there's there. no way to yeah. get out of it. They did it on purpose to try and trick you. Again, in an exploration platformer, the object is to encourage the player to explore, not the fear like dropping down somewhere and not being able to get out. That's that's all that is is that's that's like masochism as game design. Um, so that's no good. The level design, by and large, is 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 not great. Now, did I still enjoy it? Yeah, I mean, it's still not the worst game in the world. It's still on the better end of a lot of the public domain games that we've played. And it's still sort of on the better end of a lot of the Amiga platformers I've played. Um, so, you know, I didn't hate this game. If they, if again, if the company or some group would come in, take away the timer and give you infinite lives, then I could have a ton of fun with this thing. I, I never got to a point where I couldn't get out. I will say that. I'll I'm, show you the exact... I'm not I mean, saying it didn't happen. because There I is. See, there's, a, there's a part there where you can I can't. watched the levels that I couldn't get to, and I saw areas, and I thought to myself, that's tricky right there. Mm -hmm. But, uh, uh, and there's, like, for example, there are there is an area on the very, on the second level, on the first, second screen of the first level, depending on how you count them, where you have to, you have to pull a lever to activate the uh, a ledge to get you to a point where you need to be and otherwise you can't see that the ledge is there so occasionally right. you're gonna you can easily get to a point where you get somewhere where you haven't pulled the lever and you get stuck right i, I can right. understand that so let me go over i mean i agree with most of what you said here's what i don't like about I, first of all I, I think this is a game that is could this could have easily been another one that could have been released with a few tweaks and, yeah, and, I mean, again, the bottom of the screen aside, which that's a, a travesty, uh, with that that whole that the GUI, the bottom of it taking up so much space, mm -hmm. not GUI, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Your gun doesn't work on everything. I don't like that. I mean, it doesn't mm -hmm. work on hardly anything. Well, yeah, the gun is mostly useless. The also, gun is mostly useless. You can't game. shoot the gun while jumping or moving. You right. can only shoot it if you're standing completely Here, still. You, you want to know my theory? My theory is they built this game without the gun. And then at the last minute, somebody was like, hey, we got to give this guy a gun or something because that's what people like. And then they added it in because it's useless. Like you said, it only affects a couple enemies. You can't shoot it while you're jumping. And most of the enemies you just avoid by jumping over them anyway. Right. Like shooting them doesn't do you any good. All right. Uh, but still, it's it's just it, it is an odd. It's odd. Let's just put mm -hmm. it that way. Um, <clears throat> the, the level design is. I don't like. I don't like games that make you jump and where you can die when you can't see what's under you. Mm -hmm. And that happened several times on the first, I only got through, I got to level, like level, I want to say I got to level four, four, I mean, the, not the level four, probably into like the fourth or fifth set of screens right, before I got right. killed. This game is hard, punishingly hard. And then you have to go through the whole, you died thing every time, which was a pain. Because I was playing mm -hmm. this on the Amiga, so I had no save states. If you got save states in this, I save stated this thing till the cows came. Yeah, home. this is one yeah. you I would I would recommend playing emulation. Yeah, uh, because uh, without save states, this becomes a a a a, a, a long haul. Uh, there's a lot of backtracking. There's a lot of just figuring it out. I mean, there uh, this game I was so close to enjoying it. You know, I like it. I'm I'm kind of like you. It's it played when I could play it. I enjoyed it, but that mm -hmm. stupid timer, I'd see my certain color cycle, and I'm like, already? I'm yeah. already getting this? Is there not yeah. an easy level or something I could, or something where I can sit down and actually play this thing? Because you've got you've to go through the levels to see what's there before you can even attempt to beat them. Right. You know? This game, I, I don't understand, like, on, on, on the one hand, if you want to do that, cool. Like, if you want to put, like, a really low timer on there and make the game about plotting your route... I can I can accept that and I can respect it. That's a that's a legitimate yeah. way to design a game. But don't give me two lives. So you know, let me try it as many times as I need to. Let's do something fun here for a second. What do, how do you fix this game? I'm gonna offer here are the following suggestions to make this a real game. If someone wants to go and make take this game, what they put together and make it a game. Here's what I suggest. 
Number one, you ditch three fourths of the bottom of the screen that they've covered up. So you have to, so, so it looks like a real game. Number two, you uh, you give yourself, and this is a simple one, both that we see in all the good platformers of this type. When you pull down on the joystick, it lets you look down a little bit. That's all I'm mm-hmm. asking, just a little bit. Scroll the sure. screen down that much, you know, and that and that will help. Number three, either make the gun useful or get rid of it. Like there's no, there doesn't need to be an in between on mm-hmm. this thing. Uh, I think you do those things, and you've and the rest of it. I think the puzzly. This is where it looked. Look, this place below. If we were watching the video, yeah, that's the exact stage where if you go down there in that bottom quarter, there's no way to get out, which is why he didn't go down there. Yeah, <laughs> live and learn. That, by the way, dead end should never be a part of these games. Yeah, that stuff it make you kill yourself. I hate that. Mm-hmm. So, I'm assuming of the two games we covered. What was your the which one did you like? Which oh, one was more fun? I guess Wizzy's the, Wizzy's Quest is the better game. It's the better game and it's, it's the, the more, more fun complete game. game. I yeah. will say that. I think this game could have been with a few tweaks like as I mentioned, I think you could have had something here. Uh, I didn't get any reviews on this one, but Lemon did have a, a a score for it. The readers of Lemon give this a 6.86. <clears throat> I'd say that's close. I probably would go somewhere in the 6 range. Uh, mm-hmm. I don't think this is uh, on par with with uh, the last one. Yeah, uh, but, I, I'd give it a six too. I'm, I'm with you on that. But I, one. I think this is one that has potential, uh, uh, and it's a uh, you know, <laughs> this seems to be the new theme of our show: play games that are sort of close to being kind of fun. That's what we do now because <laughs> it seems like <laughs> we've been doing this with a few exceptions, like Populous Two, we like, but for weeks it mm-hmm. seems like that's what we've been doing. Do we get any Discord action on this boat? Yeah. We did, we did. Level Lord writes, The return of Doctor Strange is a nice platformer with cute graphics and even music within the game. I played it before, and even if it's not my favorite genre, I enjoyed it. Controls could be better, but for me, a solid six. Uh, Jason Warns writes, Meh, five out of ten. <laughs> um, Pixels at Dawn writes, I didn't have too much time with this, but it's definitely the better looking of the two games. Really nicely animated with great controls. This feels really slick. There are some issues with pixel perfect jumps even early on though, and I do hear it's pretty short, so that's got to be some points too. Even if it is only a couple of quid, six out of ten. So yeah, we're pretty united. We're united front with the Discord on that around the six the six range. I will say this does look good. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I'll give well, it that. Well, I mean too. it looks I mean it looks up to two. I think it's the better looking. Although yeah, the first absolutely. one isn't ugly. I like I thought they both looked pretty good. This one reminds me, like I said, this one reminds me of a game on something like the Commodore 64 or, or the NES. It's got that that look and that feel. This could have it. been, you could have put this right on the C64. Mm-hmm. But I think both of them, really, you could have put on there. That they sort of, they did rem- have that feel. The first one even had sort of looked the look to it of a C64 right. game. You're right. When you said this was somewhere between a eight and sixteen bit game, uh, yes, that be you. That you nailed it right there. If if this reminds me of like an, something I'd play, like one of those games you'd go rent. Mm-hmm. Uh, like for a weekend for the Super right. Nintendo, it's like let's go try like Billy's Quest and see what this mm-hmm. thing is. And you'd play it, and you might beat it, or you might not like it, you take it back, and then you're done. You would never yeah. buy it. You never you think just, about yeah. it again. Yeah, exactly. Speaking of never thinking about it again, Aaron, let's talk about this week's Amiga Amigos community update. Yes, sir. We had a uh, wow, a big a big week this week, uh, Boaster. Uh, let's start off by, this is hot off the presses right here, uh, a little article from our good buddy, Jack Flack, All That Blitters, Double Dragon. and <laughs> You know, Double Dragon is a reoccurring theme, uh, Bo. It comes up so <laughs> often. Remember it's like a bad we, penny. Remember when we sat down and we played all the Double Dragons? Uh, that, yes. And, 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 remember when we covered all three of them yeah. in one show in one of the dumber moves of yeah, our, our yeah, careers? We, we shouldn't have done that. Uh the uh, uh, it, Flack sort of talks about the arcade. What's different between the arcade and the uh, Amiga and Atari ST versions? Uh, and uh, uh, <clears throat> I was not the biggest. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not the biggest fan of the old uh, uh, Double Dragon. I like the arcade, okay, but the, I've never really liked any of the uh, of the home, the home versions ports. of that. Yeah, know? they're they're all disappointing in various ways for sure. Yeah, I think that by the second game, there's some quality ports of Double Dragon too, but the first one. The, the the NES port is it was a, it's a totally different game in a lot of ways. The C sixty four port, of course, Flack is already covered in great detail with the with the invisible belts and all that. Yeah. Uh, the less said about the Atari twenty six hundred version, the better. <laughs> yeah. Well, what do you expect? 
I mean, that's that's a lot to ask. That's it a is a lot, lot to, ask. to ask right there. <laughs> but yeah, everyone should go out of their way, to step over to uh, everythingamiga.com and check out Flack's article. Flack, a seasoned professional writer yes. and professional podcast. By the way, I want to mention that uh, the Flackster, uh, this, this very uh, week, well, maybe it was last week, has celebrated uh, episode 200 of uh, his show, You Don't Know Flack, uh, and the, he's doing it in three parts. The first part was a uh, gosh, a, a lengthy interview with one of his buddies, Andy, who's... Uh, Andy. Yeah, and I listened to the whole thing in the car, and it was real entertaining. So uh, if you want to catch uh, the new episodes, if you don't know Flack, episode 200, Help Rob Celebrate, uh, hop over and pick those up immediately, Boaster. Yeah, man. Now let's go over to our YouTube channel, and we've gotten a lot of action Holy over there. Holy smokes, this- Boat. Holy mackerel. Where did it begin? Well, let's go where we always go. Right down to the bottom with me and the Brent. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, we now, were, let me say this. Yes, even, even though the Grandstand Entertainment Computer might not be the highest ranking in number of views that yeah. ARG Presents you, has ever gotten, yes. I enjoyed the heck out of this episode <laughs> because I love the way you have the uncanny ability to wring gold from a stone. The way that you waxed poetic about the bowling game on this was endlessly entertaining to me. I loved it. I loved every minute of it. You know, I'm not gonna lie. The bowling game was okay uh, for the. Uh, <laughs> we did talk about the grandstand video entertainment computer from the UK, but really, I mean, let's. This was a clever facade, boat, because we actually spun the F8, which is a processor, and this was not the original thing we'd planned to do. We'd planned to do a, a computer. An awesome looking computer, but I just couldn't get it to emulate right, so we had to go to something else. The F8 said, which is the Fairchild Channel F2, mm-hmm. and and this was the uh, British version, which I thought was cool looking. It had a cool name, so that's what we went mm-hmm. with. Uh, we actually picked a couple fun games for it though, and we both agreed they were both pretty fun. I ended up playing. We this was also we picked each other's games this week. Brent picked bowling for me. I like the way you know the Fairchild has a unique look to it it, it really, does the color much just, different yeah much really, different than the atari 2600 you can always tell when it's a channel f game yeah uh and brent ended up getting galactic space wars for me this is i didn't realize this when i picked it but this is the premier title on the fairchild channel f and it's basically like uh star raiders if you took out the maps star bases mm-hmm. and anything remotely complicated you'd have this game you drive around yeah, but, it, but it also mm-hmm. on the plus side it features both TIE Fighters and the Starship Enterprise. And you shoot them both. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. so there you go. But yeah, I enjoyed this. And for, for once, we didn't get into a wild Pier 6 brawl, boats. That's that's yes. always good. So yeah, check us out. Uh, now, <laughs> this is one boat. You want to, you want to, sp- this is your baby. You want to speak on this one? <laughs> this is so the, last, this last is, week, yeah, uh, I got a mister. And, uh, and I, I, I told Aaron before the show, I'm like, hey, after we finished Amigos, just turn the camera back on and we're going to start talking. And so basically, I cut a promo you on did. everybody on on everybody everybody's build of the Mister except for mine, and how using using any kind of cooling is something that only the dumbest of the dumb would attempt. And uh, and and I I got it elicited some reactions. Uh, I have uh, I have cycled back a little bit. I did buy. I've got some heat sinks right here beside me. Uh, that I've yet to install, but if you need a heat sink, they came in a pack of five. It was like five for five bucks or something like that. So uh, look how stern. You hit me up if you, if you need if you need heat sink. You were cut, um, you were cutting a promo, and what I thought was great is I sat there and took this in. I didn't know what you had planned for this footage, by the way, but I took this in. I thought to myself, here's Boat cutting a promo on how smart he is with hardware, and I laughed and I laughed <laughs> because you've blown up so much crap. That I thought to myself, here he's he is now, and you've had a, and what also I like this much, you've had a miss for like two days, and you're, by God, it was a passionate promo, and people agreed with you, man, I loved it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So anyway, we talked about the Mister, and then I let you have the floor, and you talked. You basically, this is probably the most com- people will look back in generations to come. They'll say, what was the whole story with Aaron and the and the Unamiga? And this is it. You told the tale from soup to nuts in a way that can never be told again. So this is it. You encapsulated all of your joys and all of your sorrows with this machine. Well, you know, it's funny because I, I, I literally use the Amiga every day. <laughs> so it's a brilliant piece of hardware. Uh, but, you know, it is. Listen, we're hobbyists. 
like I, I, I wrote something on, on Discord yesterday, and I meant it. Uh, when I was talking to Eric Nelson about uh, some uh, some stuff. This was the perfect piece of hardware for me, right? It's a wacky, sort of unsupported, bizarre piece of hardware that no one owns, that it's almost impossible to figure out, <laughs> and it does everything just slightly off, and it's all weird, and it had a bunch of weird problems. I love it. I, that's right up my alley. So I, I, I've taken, I've squeezed a lot of joy out of the Amiga. And, yeah. And, and uh, that's Bernard Orange here. And by the way, the, the squeezing will continue tonight. We'll be finishing my Unamiga uh, FPGA series when I attempt the impossible. I've been putting it off, but we're going to be playing a bunch of C64 games on the stream tonight. Sweet. I so can't that, wait, you, man. It's going to be something. So, anyway, check that out. That's been a, that was a, a monster show for us. It did great. Yeah. I couldn't believe how well that did, but um, let's get on up here to now. Here's, <laughs> I'll let you figure this one out, Boat. You know, being Boat to this show called the 1200XL show, and uh, uh, this time around, Boat, we were out there doing pole position. Go ahead. That's right. So pole position. This was after one of those five or six uh, hour long episodes of Coco Talk, where I, I tossed back a couple, just a couple. <laughs> And so all of a sudden, boom, it's time for the Atari show. <laughs> and uh, and so and then it was also boom. Uh, remember, John, issues. you're the one that, that does all the research on this show. <laughs> and so uh, we I, you know, I sort of strung together the, the pole position knowledge that I've gleaned over a lifetime of looking at websites. And uh, and we talked about pole position. Um, you know, it's a, uh, I think it's a, it's a quality port, especially from the, the time that it came out. It came out just like a year after the arcade machine. But, uh, if you're into the, the 1200 XL or if you're into the Atari eight bits, uh, check out the, the 1200 XL podcast. We are going to be making this a, a, uh, you know, it's part of the rotation along with Coco show and, and our Sinclair. Um, we're going to be doing, uh, Archon, one of your favorites, Aaron, next, next time. Let me say something. Uh, uh, everyone, you know how be, a lot of people hopped on the uh, Coco uh, Express. Good move, by the way. Everyone should be hopping on the Atari 8-Bit Express to ask 48K. Check out some yeah. of his fine streams, too, by the way. He's doing a lot of sweet, sweet Atari action. Yeah. Uh, speaking of sweet action, Boat, I don't want to toot my own horn and, keep, uh, and be a shameless self-promoter, but I'm great all the time. No. Uh, <laughs> we, last week, we... Uh, I jumped on on the uh, uh, Unamiga and we played a, a, just a crud load of MSX. This yeah. was a this is a, a, a complete uh, uh, journey into the unknown for me because I only played a few in MSX games and also I had hardly tested this on the Unamiga. But hey, guess what? It ran great mm -hmm. and it did a yeah, great I, job. I really enjoyed it. The MSX is so unique. I think we were talking about this on the show. It occupies that graphical space between the ZX Spectrum. And like, sort of like the the C sixty four maybe. What what would you call it, Aaron? It is. It, it's like a but. It's like having because so much stuff got ported to it from other machines. So you've mm -hmm. got stuff that looks it looks dead on like like this game. If you're watching at home, it's a dead on ZX Spectrum game. You got crap looks just like an Amstrad game. You got crap looks just like a C sixty four game. Plus you got some console stuff. It's a PC stuff. It's a real. Yeah. It's a. I mean, there's a ton of stuff available for it. You know, and and if you look at the difference in the way the games look, it you would swear to you, yourself that this is no way that one computer is using all this because some of it looks like just awful, and some mm -hmm. of it looks like really, really good. And Let's like, not forget that the first Metal Gear game came out on the MSX. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. So you you get a, 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 I think we covered a pretty good swath of stuff. We had no idea what we were doing, so I yeah. would have people suggest stuff, and we would try stuff that had wacky names and arcade ports. So if you want to see two hours of Unamiga playing the MSX on FPGA, this is the show for you. I really had a good time on this one. And we'll definitely, I've got MSX games coming out to Yin Yangs, and we'll be coming back to that one, Boatster, cool, in cool. the future. Uh, Boat, you might as well, here we go. Why don't you explain what's going on with these little uh, FPGA Yeah, so if you, if you subscribe to the channel, you're not going to see these videos pop up in your feed. You won't be notified by them. YouTube is starting this thing called Shorts. And uh, and they are they, they want to compete with TikTok basically. So they are they are uh, they they're 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 making this format where you you submit vertical or portrait oriented video, and then they heavily promote these things on on the uh, on the mobile site. Okay, so um you know I'm like well if they're going to be doing this we need to be putting out some stuff for it. So I thought well why not just do little short gameplay footage videos with some neat frames. Uh, and so I've done a couple. I've done a, a, a Rainbow Islands one. I did, did some Nest stuff today. So like I said, 
you won't see these uh, pop up in your subscriber feed. Uh, but if you see them on the mobile site, then you'll just know that YouTube's doing its job with the algorithm and, uh, and you're seeing, you know, you're seeing the stuff that, that, uh, that they want you to see. So anyway, that's what these, these little, uh, these little shorts are. Um, but you know, feel free to ignore them. They're just gameplay footage. There you go. There you go. Now, here's something you absolutely positively do not want to ignore. That's no. the latest go around of our good buddy, the Flaxster, Jack Flack. Uh, getting in some straight up paradroid, the newly the newly clean shaven Look Rob Black O'Hara. Yeah. Look at him! It's like a whole. I thought it was like it's a whole different guy mm -hmm. came into town, but it's the same same great action. Uh, Flack breaks it down here and shows you where was this guy back in the day? But we were trying to play this game. Oh my god! He holds your hand and then lovingly invites you to take in the playing of paradroid. I think I think Flack said this was his personal favorite. Uh, of all time. I started listening to this episode uh, on the way to school this morning, and uh, I'm going to have to give this game another try. Flack has the uncanny ability of taking a game that I don't think I'm into and making it seem like something I should give another shot at. Because when go. we did that, we, we did, uh, we we did, did a game called Quasitron or something yeah. for the Spectrum. It's yeah. supposed to be like the 3D version of Paradroid. Yeah. And uh, and I was like, well, I don't know if I need to play the Paradroid itself, but he, he made it sound really cool. So. Yeah, this 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 is a whole... Uh, uh, I think the uh, the ZX version is just for a new person. I think that the the way it looks is a probably added to the complication of it. Yeah, because yeah. I was much like you. We we sort of scratched our heads in a vain attempt to understand. Uh, but uh, yeah, I caught uh, uh, most of this uh, stream. Good stuff. Flack always entertaining, always on his game. So please check out uh, the Sprite Castle's plays of Paradroid, and then go check out Sprite Castle the podcast. Also great. You can get it yes. right here on the Amigos uh, feed. So good to go. Um, here we go. Now, I just saw this one pop up today. In fact, it did just pop up today, Boatster. Mm -hmm. This is the Hermski, the Hermster, coming on, and he's looking through Crash Issue 2. Now, was it, was it, he did Crash Issue 1 last time, is that correct? Right, so, recall? you know, uh, uh, Hermski has a very rare and expensive collection of these Crash magazines. I look these things up on eBay. They go for the big dollars. Oh, yeah? So, we get to, we're lucky enough that he's opened the vaults and and, and does these flick throughs, uh, and uh, and you know gives some commentary on them. Look at that cover. Yeah, it's that a, it's awesome. a classic, classic Hong cover. Has his spectrum, right? <laughs> it's got his he's woman. It. He's good to go, Boat. That's all you need, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now I haven't had a chance to watch this one yet because it just came out earlier yeah. today. But uh, I've seen. I watched the first one he did with the issue one of Crash, and yeah, I really enjoyed great. it. I loved yeah. it. I can't wait to see this. I'm this. <laughs> I watch. I'm, I, well, I pretty much watch everything that comes across our stream. But I, I watch the last one. I like it because a lot, I'm learning a lot of stuff. I mean, there's no way we could ever know this except like, even if we sat down and read the app magazine. Because a lot of mm -hmm. this stuff, you have to know what's going on in the UK to even have a clue what's happening. So right, exactly. I like that. You know, we're, we're, <laughs> to say this wasn't a, a, uh, in America would be an understatement. We had no idea this computer existed at the time. So yeah, Hermsky, for God's sakes, check this out. You know, it's gold. He's always thinking outside the box, boat. Uh, Let's move down the line here, and this just this is hot off the presses, boat. Just before airtime, our good buddy, our pal, our bosom companion, Frodo NL, popped up his stream of the Commodore VIC-20. He's playing games from 81 and 82 uh, this mm. time around. I'm trying to think. You know, I don't know if I actually caught this, but I don't think I saw this stream on the VIC. The Vic mm -hmm. is sort of a mystery wrapped in an enigma for me. I never seem to... We don't play that much with the Vic. And no. so I've only played a few games. And the games I played... When me and Brent played... Uh, uh, I think it was Gorf. And that the dungeon crawling game that's real popular on there. And it was good. They were both good. So, I mean, the what do you know about the uh, the ever popular Vic, Boat? All I know about the Vic is that that was the Shatner computer, wasn't it? I think it was, Boat. Yeah, and that's you know all I good. know. I know that it came before the C64... Yeah. I know that it was people tend to think of it as a as a failure, but put in terms of sales, it outsold pretty much everything except for the C sixty four up until that time. I mean, it was a huge hit. It was just it was eclipsed Dang. by the monster world beating C sixty four in terms of Look sales. Look at that boat. For those yeah. listening, this is a, a motorboat game. Where you just you docked it. This looks great. <laughs> yeah, this is this is another one of these games that it's got a really you know, the another one of these computers that's got a really unique art style. The way that the yeah. text is generated on the screen and stuff like that. 
it's uh I, I need to play some more Vic. Maybe that I think that there's a core on the Mister. I'll probably check it out. Yeah, absolutely. And I've been I do catch a lot of Frodo streams. He happens to be streaming when I can catch it. And mm-hmm. uh, 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 he just did one uh, on the MSX, and which was fresh on my mind, obviously, because I just done one. And just watching him go through it, there's there's a lot of I find a lot of ga- great games out on his shows where he goes like the first year, the first two years. Yeah, it's a I great idea. Very clever, very clever from Frodo. Uh, Boat, uh, do you? I know you guys didn't do a show this week. Do you want to comment on what you guys, uh, what's going on with uh, uh, your show with Neil? Yeah, so this week in retro, we were off this week, but we'll be back with a vengeance next week. So uh, I will give you guys an update and maybe ask your opinion, Aaron, on some of the stories that we're talking about. Very good. That's all we got, Boat. Yeah, I, I guess we should announce uh, that with, since we're in this part of the show, uh, if you are watching live, uh, or even if you're not watching live, tomorrow at around 5 o'clock or so, you and I, Aaron, we're going to be doing uh, Ask the Amigos for this month and our Sinclair and the Coco Show, I think. I think so, so yeah. Well, yeah. So on our Sinclair, we're going to be doing Elevator Action, which I'm really excited about. Yeah. It's a, a great port. And on the Coco Show, Rescue on Fractalus. Yeah. Uh, so uh, it'll be neat to compare the Coco version of that game against uh, the Atari 8-bit version, which I'm the, the most familiar with. You know, I want to, there's a couple of bits of news I want to get in here before I forget, Boat, as you know. Uh, one thing is, let's talk a little bit about Amiga Addict Magazine. Uh, uh, this is the magazine that uh, many of our buddies are working on. We talked about it pretty much every week. I happen to have ordered an issue of of, uh, of uh, Amiga Addict right, you know, in December, and you know, lo and behold, because of our screwed up mail system here, uh, we, I didn't get I didn't get it. You know, and they had shipped it, I just didn't get it. So they sent me out another one, and, and it popped in the mail. Here it is. I haven't even opened it yet. And I, in fact, I was going to talk about this last week, but I'm glad I didn't. So. Just to show it off here, bam! There's our there's our buddy Bill. Oh, uh, boat! Look at that. Such guy. a handsome man. This is glossy as glossy as they come, mm-hmm. and uh, I mean, just uh, you can tell by looking at it. Man, this uh, it is this is nice. All right. Why don't you turn right to the the A one story there, Aaron? The A one story. That, that one being my my review of Fury of the Furries. Well, listen. That's the that's why that magazine sold. That's let's why face it got off let's the face facts, boat. Some of your insights are questionable, like your, for example, with the Bitmap Brothers, and then now, and now here come the fur. I know you thought that game was fun or whatever. I don't remember being too keen on it, but good lord, there's, there's your, there's your face right there, bro. It's my glorious visage. Look at that. What a handsome man, as smart as you are handsome. Anyway, to finish this story, boat, this came in the mail, and then a couple days later, this showed up. This is postmarked. Because uh, this tells me when they sent that twelve sixteen, so it took the good old American postal system that long for this to show up, and lo and behold, there it is, another copy. So, Boat, I'm going to hand one of these bad boys to you, my yeah, friend. Yeah, I, I still uh, have not received either of my copies. And if you'd like, but I, I can, don't know what's going on. I can with autograph that, so. this for you, uh, and to uh, I'd appreciate that. Yeah, if you would. I'm going to write uh, you how much money you owe me for it. So there you go. <laughs> there you go. Thanks to the guys over at, at Amiga, uh, Amiga Attic for doing such a great job and for sending me out another copy. I appreciate that, despite the fact that it wasn't your fault uh, that the thing got lost in the first place. So there you go. Right. And one other right. item, Bode. One, this is important. I almost forgot. This Saturday at 5.30 Eastern, it will be a happening, Bode. The third gathering, the third gathering of the International Computer Club will take Ooh. place. Uh, this will be 5.30 p.m. Again, Saturday, March 27th, Boat. This will be uh, a week from Saturday. So this will be March 27th. I repeat, March 27th. We will be having International Computer Club. We've already got six big presenters lined up. Luminaries uh, in the field of Amiga and other computers. Hardware, software, the whole nine yards, Boat. It should be a good time. Uh, we urge everyone to, uh, to stop by and check us out on Twitch. And if you are so inclined, you also are more than happy to uh, join us. I'll be posting the Zoom link up in our Discord. So if you're part of our Discord community, you want to pop in and have yourself uh, uh, pictured amongst all these other giants and also me, then you will. Uh, we are more than welcome to do it. Again, March 27th, 5.30 p.m., Boat. Oh, and you know what? You, you, didn't, you neglected to mention the biggest news of last week, which was the first truly... 
um, a regular meeting of the team speaker regulars oh, as we, well, we branched out. I hadn't thought about it, but yeah, we might as well talk about that. So we added, after Boat Brow beat me furiously, uh, we decided to move our team speaker regulars over to the Discord. And we now have two rooms in our Discord. If you're one of our uh, subscribers, which, by the way, a buck a month, it's worth it. Get in there. We're having buckets of fun. And we have added a, a, a group. This is the team speaker regulars where I'm going to start posting schedules, gaming ideas, stuff like that. And then there's a voice channel in the Discord. I never use the voice and video channels on Discord, stupidly. But these things are the bomb. And so all week long, pretty much every night, I can pop in there and people are in there playing games. And they're streaming. They're streaming just to you. Like, this is a Twitch. You're just on Discord. You're chatting with them. You can stream your little game uh, on, on uh, uh, Discord. Uh, you can play with other people, get pickup games going. We're all about live gaming. And I'm hoping in the near future, Boat, to get some sweet, sweet uh, uh, karaoke. The yeah, the ancient art of karaoke. Uh, Finally, I, people will hear the real me. Yeah. Well, you're not invited, Boat. I'm sorry. Oh. But I, I remember watching Pixels at Dawn do uh, the uh, the uh, Twitch Sing stuff. I was like, man, this is great. Well, they got rid of that. That's because they don't like us. But... That doesn't mean we can't do it in Discord. So if you're interested in some, something like that, anyway, all details. Everyone, please come post something in the in the Team Speaker Regulars section and come visit the Team Speaker Regulars video and audio area just to chat, just to kill time, watch the people play. It's fun. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I guess we should mention uh, if you do want to support the show on Patreon, we uh, we no longer offer the actual the one dollar tier. Oh, we that has not been around for a while. Four dollars a month, a dollar an episode gets you the Discord. Get you the show, get you an ad free uh, feed of the show, and uh, and it, it really just it, it, it really helps us. Uh, if you want to go to patreon.com slash amigos podcast, ten dollars a month, you can be part of the amigos game selection committee. Uh, you can help us choose the games that we play every week. And then finally, uh, if you want to support the show at the fifteen dollar a month level, the amigos community VIP, you get your own room in the Discord server where you can talk about whatever you want. Mm in addition to all of the other uh, things. Those rooms get real interesting, Boat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, now, Aaron, we should talk about, speaking of the Discord community, we have some hot and heavy game challenges going on. The Amiga, or the Amiga High Score Challenge uh, this month is International Karate Plus. Uh, Z9K9 leads the charge with this, but Sundown Zorglub and Paul, aka Hermski, are right behind him. I'm way behind because I'm horrible at this game. 5400. Could but, you read uh, the score can, again, Boat? The, the, the number one score? The number one score. The number one score is more than 10 times what my score is. <laughs> Z9K9, 58,100. My score, 5,400. And I thought I had an awesome game going there. So yeah. Shows you what <laughs> I know. Don't feel bad. I'm not that good at that game either. And uh, a, a really interesting game, Turbo Esprit. Is uh, is going on on the Specky High Score Challenge? You can jump in, play Turbo Esprit, record your high score. These high score challenges rotate in and out every month, and the winner gets to pick the next month's game. So uh, make good. sure you check that out. Very good. All right, Aaron. As we circle around towards the end of the show, it's time to thank some of the fine folks that make everything happen. You know, I'm talking about our Twitch subscribers and our Patreon supporters. Uh, if you enjoy watching the show live on Twitch, uh, or if you go back and you watch the, the, the VODs and you want to support the show by subscribing, you're welcome to. Uh, we want to thank Macintosh Librarian, Mitsuyama, Pints and Amiga, Da, Crabs, MTG, Eeyore4077, Frodo and L, Lamasta, Retro Jerry, Uber Scuba Diver, Great Algae, Peeplo, Bigfoot's Armpits, Negsol, Memories of a Spectrum Gamer, All Rom, Jost80, Chronosnet, Captain Chaos DK, Jigglebox, Still Adolescing, John Marshall 3, Buck Owens, Retro Rewind.ca, Blue Train, Christian Russell, MC Chessers, The Slow Norse, J. Dark Anubis, L. Curtis Boyle, All Hail, Mr. Sebastian, and Gary Heather. Thank you guys so much yeah, thank you. for supporting Amigos. Yes. Now, last week, Aaron, the Amigos Patreon Song Challenge. This one was, uh, this one was, we had quite a few, quite a few uh, correct responses. Neo MK got it right. Pixels at Dawn, Mitsuyama, and Chris Folds all got it right. The name of the song was Cast No Shadow by Oasis. So uh, congratulations to all of you guys that got it right. And if you know this week's Patreon Song Challenge, please 
Do not post it in the chat if you're watching live, please. Uh, instead, send me an email at john at amigospodcast.com, and I will announce you as a winner on next week's show. Are you ready, Aaron? <sighs> yes. Brace yourselves, everyone. Here we go. Da, da, da. David C. George Rosensky, the Amiga Show, Daniel Crabtree, Super Femi King, Crazy Loomis, William Venter Scott, Heavy Systems Inc., Bundy Fraglord, Mark Bilando, Hulavo. Rumska Jonah, a.k.a. Simulant, Alien Breeder, Dave Velociraptor, Calbird Boy, Lane Denson, Luke Hudson, John Cook, on the base, Frodo in hell, Soul Incisor Tech. Major Gun, Mr. Cola, Daniel Williams, Bernard Lucas, Jerry Dennington, Zorg Love Reflection, Simon Ledge, Captain Crispy, Kilobytes and Caffeine, Gary Heather, Free Lunch, Kate Fox, David Pickford. Cameron Armstrong, Andy Jones, Lobster Manator, Tin Man and Amiga Retrocast, Bernard Quinn, Ray RMC, Tim Drew, Simon Rose, Joseph Harrison, Kyle Heder, Rob O'Hara, And remarks, Joe the Zombie, Leaf Kilan, Alan Kibai, Chico Taylor, Lord, John Marshall, Matthew Perron, Ricky DeRoche, Creepy, Dead Boy Ziggy, CTZ, The Slow Norris, Step on Tour Guard, Mortensen, Edvin, Helen, Blender 75, Christopher Hussle, Ravi Abbott. Chris Foles, Lauren Giroux, Graham Vip, Key, Adam Vadis, Beat, O'Brien's Retro Vintage, Gary Hucker, Paul Harrington, Duncan Styles, Dave from the Crib, Josh Nan, Adam Bradley, Jonas Rulo, THC, Eric Nelson, Kim Tommy Ulrich Dad, Daniel Benston, Brutal Barracuda, Darren Cole, Jason Bowles, Pixels of Dawn, and Gil Bjorn Bob. Did you hear that boat? That was a thousand hippies crying out at once. <laughs> All right. Now, uh, Aaron, before we go, we did a little YouTube poll last week. Uh, this is just something that I, that I threw out there on the, uh, on, on the, on the interwebs. And it was, what do you prefer? Populous, Populous 2, or neither? I'd rather be playing Megalomania. Now, yeah. what do you think the results of that uh, of that uh, that poll were? I always, when it comes to these sort of public polls, I always lean toward the smarmiest response. So I'm going to go with the third one. Although I I, I would probably you play are correct, too. my good sir. The yeah. third one, the smarmiest response, was the correct one. Uh, Forty six percent of the thirty seven votes we got said neither. I'm playing Megalomania. So there we go. I'll throw another poll question out there this week uh, for the folks on YouTube. So if you want that. Make sure you subscribe to the Amigos Retro Gaming channel. Now, Aaron, next week, Paul, a.k.a. Hermsky, the illustrious member of the Amigos Gaming Selection Committee, has suggested in this game the committee voted, and it is approved, Rally Championships. A racing game, Aaron. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Rally Championships. Okay. I don't know that one, Bo. Do we know Me that neither. one? Okay. No. 
Yeah. So uh, anyway, we'll it. should be a good one. We will be back next Friday for another new episode of Amigos. We'll see you guys then. Until then, adios. adios.